The right IDE for development makes a huge difference in productivity. But so many people don't take their time to set up their dev environment the right way. Today I'll show you the most important extensions for VS Code to make you more productive. Hi Zen here and welcome to my channel. The first extension that is must have for C++ development is C slash C++. This one is by Microsoft and you should install it right now. What it offers you is a lot of uh, quality of life stuff like um, auto completion for your code that you write, better navigation for your code that you write and better debugging capabilities. But you find all of what it actually offers here. You should install it and I have already done that. And now let's, let's have a look at what it actually does for you. So for instance, if you want to complete the code that you write, you can write something like standard and then it will come up with examples of the functions that you probably want to use. So in this case, uh, cout is probably the function that I want to use. Uh, and if I'm hitting then enter, then it will automatically input the code. So this IntelliSense feature is really, really powerful. Another thing that you can do is, for instance, if you have a specific class and want to jump to the definition of that class, it also allows you to do that by hitting F12. Then I'm directly at the definition. Even if the definition would be in a different file or in a different header, it would find the correct definition for you, assuming you have set up your code properly. The second one is that you want to improve the look and feel of your Visual Studio code. So it doesn't matter what you look and feel you prefer, but you should set up your environment uh, with a look and feel that you like, because if you like it, you will be more productive. So for instance, I have installed here the material theme and the material dark theme. I think they are both uh, really, really great in highlighting the colors. But uh, as I said, again, the colors are uh, different for everyone. I just like them very much. Just choose one which has a lot of differentiation between the different um, parts of the language. So for instance, if you have the keywords of a language, if you have variables, if you have local variables and so on, uh, that they are all nicely distinguishable because this just makes you more productive. So a few good ones that I can recommend is definitely Material Dark or the Material Theme in general, or even the Solarized uh, ones, they are also quite good. But uh, I recommend on just playing around a little bit with it, because uh, also you need to see a little bit what the colors look like. So for instance, if you in Visual Studio Code have installed a lot of different color themes, you can use Control K followed by Control T, and then you will come into this uh, menu where you can select the colors on the fly. So for instance, I can also choose now the solarized light, uh, which I also used for a while, but then it got too light for me. Or you can, by again pressing Control K and Control T, um, go to, for instance, the material theme that is a little bit lighter or KT um, in my uh, in my view here the material theme or the material dark theme uh, these I enjoy just very much but uh, choose your own I just think that it's so much better if you have one that fits your personal style the next one that I find absolutely essential is to have the right font this is really, really important, but I see so many people neglect it. The right font will increase the readability of any code that you write by a lot. What you need to do is in your workspace, if you want to have this for your own workspace, to create the settings.json file. And um, I have just a bare bones uh, settings file here to show you the different things of today. So what I'm talking about is the font family. It's in this case, Source Code Pro. And in my opinion, Source Code Pro is the best uh, programming font that you will ever find. It's just optimized and you can also read a lot about it. Uh, trust me, use this one. It will improve the look and feel of your code. Um, so you need to add this line. So for instance, if I uh, remove here a character, you immediately see that it does already apply this on the fly. So it knows that source code pro is already installed on the system. And it also uses this one directly. 
but if you haven't installed it, um, the Linux distributions usually, usually don't come with it delivered right on. So you need to take some extra steps to in, install the code uh, in, and install the source code pro font family. On Windows, it's a little bit different. I think there it's called something like source code pro and then probably even this minus light. So I think this is what you need on Windows. Um, but on Linux, you need this. And in both cases, you need to have the font installed. To install it, you can just go to the homepage of, for instance, Font Squirrel, where you can get any types, any fonts that you want to have. Uh, download this one, like the OTF file. If you see here, I already have uh, downloaded the source code pro zip file. And what I now need to do is I need to unzip it into the user share fonts open type source code pro. And the next step that you need to do is to actually fill the cache of your font library with the newly installed font. And this you do by FC minus cache minus F minus V. And if you hit it, then it will tell you which fonts it's currently finding on the system. And for our font for the open type, there we should have the source code pro and with some directories, some fonts inside. So this is really all that you need. And then you can go back to your Visual Studio code and put here source code pro and it should do the right thing. By the way, you don't need also to do this in the settings JSON file. You can directly do it also in the normal settings file. And here you have the user workspace and the folder settings. And here in the folder settings, I have now changed it. But this is always in Visual Studio reflected by the JSON file. But yeah, let's have a look. If I reset the setting to what the default is, and I think it's Droid Sans Mono, and uh, then we can have a look at, for instance, how this will look like. And I think it's harder to read, um, but let's compare again. So keep that one in mind. And if we now have here the font family activated again, um, it just looks so much cleaner, uh, so much better. And it's really easy to do diffs or to review code that others have written. Um, using this form because it was really optimized for readability. The next extension that I can recommend is Better Comments. So Better Comments enables you to write comments in a different way to change their color, basically. This is, a, this is all that it does, but I think it's very powerful when you scroll through your code and see the comments highlighted in dif uh, different colors to really get a look and feel and see what's important and what isn't. So for instance, if I go here, I can put here a normal comment, which is probably just describing the algorithm, or I could do something like, this is important. Then it will automatically highlight me that, or something like a to-do comment, which will automatically be in orange. So I really like this one because it gives a little bit better structure, a little bit better readability to the comments that are right. One extension that was really on every machine installed that I knew is the bracket colorizer. Um, the bracket pair colorizer is doing very cool things. So basically it was taking these brackets that are here and um, counting the number of indentations that they have and coloring each of them differently. This is now a key feature of Visual Studio Code, so no need to download this extension, which has pioneered this. But what you need to do now is in your settings file again, just to enable the bracket pair color colorization and the bracket pairs and then you also enjoy this very nice feature of Visual Studio Code. And you can just see it here that each of those brackets will have a different color. And it's really then easy to find where your loop or your function starts and where it actually does end. No need to count any brackets anymore. The next extension that I want to show is GitLens. GitLens is also so cool because 
as any good developer you should use source control and git lens in my opinion is the best git um, integration that you can have for visual studio code um, also you could check out git kraken i also like this one a lot but anyways this is about git lens today and it offers you so much features to navigate your code um, based on the version control system git so for instance it introduces here who has done the change who has touched this line the last time so for instance here it see it writes to me that i have touched this line a month ago and also with the commit i can directly here move to the commit where i have changed it and i see the commit message see the date so it's offering a lot of useful information that i would otherwise need to go to git to get and i also can see here the different revisions of the files and compare the different revisions of the files what is currently on which branch and so on so it has so many features it's definitely worth checking out and giving it a good look and look at all the features it will boost your productivity by a lot Another extension that I really like is the icons extension. So this is, I think, also directly from the VS Code team. It's called VS Code Icons, I guess. And this one is doing nothing more than just changing the icons of what you have here. Um, but I think that having those icons for the different files that you want to have is really, really useful and it's really enabling you to directly move to the files that you want to have because each, each extension can have a different little picture here. So just to show this again in action, here for instance the main which is a C++ file has a C++, the header has this age or if I move to more complex code then for instance there are any files, there are build files which have then some different and you immediately also see the build products that are here and it's just so much easier to navigate this tree when you have the right icons the last extension that i want to show you is clank format um, which is an extension that enables you to um, to format your code automatically so this one is what i'm talking about clank format so you should install that and then what you additionally lead is the clank format executable so usually you can install this by using um, <clears throat> by using the package manager of your choice so in this case it's sudo apt-get install and simply clank format oh this one is wrong and I have already installed this here on the system, so that's why it doesn't do anything here. And then what you need to do is you need to go to your file, like for instance, uh, any main file that you want to have, and then press Control Shift. And on Linux, I think it's I, and on Windows, I think it's F, but in this case, it's Control Shift I, and then it will format the file based on the style that you currently have active. To influence the style of the Clank format, what you can do is on the top level of your directory, you can create this .clank format file. So we want to dump the configuration and for that we can uh, use the minus minus help just to see that it's called minus minus dump config. We want to have that and we want to also have this minus minus style option because then we can say which configuration we actually want to dump. And in this case, it's then clank format minus minus um, dump config and minus minus style equals probably Google. So let's go with Google at this point. And then it will offer or then it will show you all the options that you have available pre-filled with how Google would use it. And if you now want to dump this to the right file, you can use this pipe operator and dump this to dot clang minus format. And then you have also this nice style file here, which is describing how you want to have the code styled. And then it will automatically use this file whenever you call the clang format extension inside this working tree of yours.
That's all the extensions that I have for you today. I think they're really, really useful and can boost your productivity. If you have more extensions that you find invaluable to you, please let me know down in the comments below. Subscribe if you like the content and as always, happy coding.